Historic places and the stories they keep can be used as weapons for harm or for positive social impacts. Some Americans use heritage, culture, and monuments to express their personal and civic values. We at the National Trust for Historic Preservation and our partners don't believe these racist images in public space, whether historically or today, expresses who we are becoming. It's true that the Black experience is partly about racial inequality. That's real. Yet the African-American story reveals a rich historical narrative that extends far beyond this history of suffering and marginalization. Instead, our work is to flip the traditional script, telling a new, broader, and truer American story, where African Americans are actors in history rather than spectators. We counter injustice by preserving historic places that expand the American story and redefine a new culture and narrative. Our preservation is activism and a tool for equity and justice. As a graduate student at the University of Kentucky in 2004, I had the good fortune to conduct the statewide inventory of historic Rosenwald schools in my home state of Kentucky. They represent a massive school building program developed by Booker T. Washington and funded by philanthropist Julius Rosenwald. Together, they helped to fund the construction of over 5,000 schools in 15 Southern states. The design team included America's first African-American architect, Robert Taylor, and landscape designer was George Washington Carver. These schools, where many African-American children were educated during the Jim Crow years, they stand as the physical manifestation of a social movement in response to a crisis in Black education. During this year and a half long research pro process, I learned that my mom and dad both attended Rosenwald schools. I felt a connection to the past and iconic figures in history like never before. I had this multi-sensory experience with these new places. I could feel the sun's warmth casting light through the historic windows, and I could hear the creaking floorboards as I walked inside these often forgotten and abandoned buildings. But there was also a sixth sense that accompanied me, a transcendent quality. I began to understand the power of old buildings and landscapes to bring the past into the present unlike any other form of history. Through their vision for uplifting the Black community, a continuity was established, a through line to the next generation. It was ongoing and real, and their contributions more than 100 years ago had directly impacted my life through my parents attending Rosenwald schools. Preservation makes Washington's and Rosenwald's lives once lived real. History shows us that countless ordinary citizens were the vanguards of collective action and social innovation. The architecture of the schools was a tangible statement of the equality of all children. Their existence made them the focal point of community identity and aspirations. All over the country, a diverse coalition of preservationists are intersecting racial justice and architecture and are galvanizing preservation campaigns for Rosenwald schools, historically black colleges and universities, and Brown and versus Board of Education sites. As a preservation leader and activist, it's critically important to acknowledge that though our nation may be rich in diverse history, it's often been poor in its representation of that history and in funding its protection, preservation, and recognition. That's why in November 
2017, the National Trust for Historic Preservation launched its African American Cultural Heritage Action Fund, a $25 million preservation campaign to build a true national identity that reflects America's diversity. I am proud to be the founding executive director and to lead this effort for the National Trust, which preserves culture to expose the world and our nation to the ideals, politics, art, and the hope of America. We tell overlooked stories embodied in places, stories of African-American resilience, activism, and achievement that are fundamental to the nation itself. Within our understanding of history, preservation, and social justice, the Action Fund has emerged as a movement for the equitable interpretation of American history. For example, many of you probably have heard about Nina Simone, but what about Polly Mary? The simple, unadorned, childhood homes of the civil rights lawyer Polly Mary and the shun twos, Nina Simone in North Carolina, imbued with the legacies of political activism and indelible artistry, should be interpreted for the public to enjoy like Abraham Lincoln's birthplace and Theodore Roosevelt's Elkhorn Ranch. These places help the nation learn more about his role models who exemplify higher education, self-confidence, and leadership. Preserving this tapestry of our shared culture, pride, and heritage is an act of racial justice and should be viewed as a civil right. Both women were gifted, revolutionary, and unapologetic voices of the past. Simone introduced the world to a sense of depth and darkness through her music that can only be rivaled by the richness of her soul and the toughness of her skin. Her legacy is rooted in a raw musical genius and without question, her words continue to mold future generations. Meanwhile, through intellectualism and legal research, Mary challenged the social and political structure of American society. Even today, the legacy of her legal attack on both segregation and Jane Crow, a term she originated to draw attention to how racial and sexual discrimination affected Black women, helps correct the nation's imperfections on race and inspires her commitment to social justice. There are similar historic places and communities that are defined by the courage, vision, and achievement of great Americans of every generation. By preserving the beauty, uniqueness, complexity, and significance of historic African-American sites, we craft a more accurate American story and identity. So, if I ask you, who is the first self-made female millionaire in the United States, would you know? Have you ever heard about Villa Loaro or Bert Natandi? Hidden in plain view, there are architectural marvels and overlook stories that take your breath away. In Irvington, New York, stands Madam C.J. Walker's Villa Loaro, a historic and elegant residence that embodies the optimism and perseverance of American entrepreneurship. Born Sarah Breedlove in 1867, first person in her family born free in Delta, Louisiana, Madam Walker would transcend plantation life to become a beauty industry entrepreneur and America's first self-made female millionaire. She said, I am a woman who came from the cotton fields of the South. And from there, I promoted myself into the business of manufacturing hair goods and preparations. I have made it possible for many colored women to abandon the wash tub for a pleasant and more profitable occupation. In 1917, the New York Times described her home, a wonder house with a degree of elegance and extravagance 
that a princess might envy. Her estate was designed by pioneering architect Vertner Tandy, the first licensed black architect in the state of New York, and arguably one of the finest and earliest examples of high style residential architecture in the United States, owned and paid for by a woman. In effect, Walker created an intentional monument of beautiful artistry dedicated to her life as inspiration to other African Americans and her will, she said. The madam will give the beautiful palace and trust to her race after the life of herself and that of her daughter. As she thinks of it now, will be held a memoriam of her, a museum or monument, where in the after years, members of her race may pilgrimage to it, prodding him to renewed energy because of the realism of such a grand result. She understood the power of architecture in her own life to inspire great achievements in all Americans. I wonder why every little girl and boy doesn't know about this history. And then there are other examples of sites of resilience and self-emancipation that counter the historical images of suffering and lack of agency, like Fort Monroe in Virginia, which has long been recognized for its Confederate military heritage associated to Robert E. Lee, who helped build the fort, and Jefferson Davis, who was in prison there following the war. But the fort has an underappreciated heritage related to the origins and ending of slavery in America. In 1619, the first slave ship to arrive to the English-speaking New World deposited its cargo of enslaved human beings where Fort Monroe now stands today. Fast forward to 1861, as the Civil War raged, Shepard Mallory, Frank Baker, and James Townsend, enslaved African Americans, sought protection in Fort Monroe, a Union stronghold. Union General Benjamin Butler declared them contraband of war and became the hero in this story. As word spread of the freedom seekers at Fort Monroe, more than 500,000 enslaved people following in the footsteps of Mallory, Baker, and Townsend, leading to one of the most extraordinary moments in American history, and until now, overlooked story of self-emancipation and self-determination, and the unwavering resilience of three men who escaped bondage. We must tell the full history. For example, Visitors can tour the diverse collection of sites across the Birmingham Civil Rights National Monument in Alabama and see firsthand where leaders like Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth, Reverend Ralph Abernathy, and ordinary citizens called foot soldiers of the Civil Rights Movement developed and implemented the Birmingham campaign known as Project C, which broke the back of segregation in the South. In 1963, armed only with the truth and their fearless resolve in the spiritual battle against immorality. Black men, women, children, and their allies tested and affirmed the timeless idea that purposeful collective action can change our nation and the world. Today at these sites, visitors experience a multi-layered and visceral history and learn from the stories of courage, freedom, and community organizing that has shaped who we are as a people and a nation today. To balance public memory, we're not just commemor commemorating a culture of injustice and in the form of violence, barking police dogs, water hoses, and more. Through an activist lens, we're preserving a new civil rights culture and legacy and the power of organization. So today's social justice leaders can draw wisdom and examples that are all the more important at this time in our history. As a nation, 
We are deciding right here and now how we will tell the history of America going forward. Telling the full American story isn't just about acknowledging the complex, difficult, and racist parts of our past, but elevating the stories that span centuries and evoke an empowering positive history. Cultural assets that bring forward the African-American experience have served a crucial role and illuminating the humanity of Black people. This is our activism. In this moment, we should all ask ourselves this question. What stories must be told and what sites must be preserved that help us all to create a more just and equitable society?